Now we're ready to get into the real guts of altruistic behavior in animals. And the most important mechanism is called indirect or kin selection via inclusive fitness. And this is altruism that is specifically directed at close relatives. Now, inclusive fitness is an expansion of the original idea from Darwin. And inclusive fitness has two components. First is the direct fitness, personal reproductive success. That's what we've been measuring when we looked at uh, heterozygote advantage and looking at selection on one genotype over another. This is Darwinian fitness from parent to offspring. But with inclusive fitness, we have a second component. It's called indirect fitness. And this is the, in, the increased reproductive success of your close relatives as a result of your altruistic behavior, weighted by a coefficient of relatedness. Now, if we look at individual fitness, so this is the traditional way of thinking about it, and we have a very selfish organism. So all it does, it goes out to make sure that it has more and more offspring of its own. That's the only way it gets its genes into the next generation is through its own offspring. And that's what we've been looking at up until today. But with inclusive fitness, ah, there's another way that you can get more genes into the next generation. And you still have your direct fitness, although by being altruistic, you're reducing your personal fitness by a certain amount. But what you're doing is replacing your personal fitness with enhanced reproduction of your close relatives. And so if you can benefit somebody in your close family, they also share the same genes that you do, and that can get more copies of your genes in the next generation. Now, the importance of this indirect component depends entirely on how closely related you are to this other individual. The more closely related you are, the more likely you are to share alleles in common. So let's do a pedigree here and let's look at two different alleles. The altruist allele, which we'll call A, and the selfish allele we'll call S. And let's pretend this altruist allele is new in the population. It's dominant, so it's expressed even in the heterozygote. And so we have a mating pair here. One of them has the altruistic gene. The offspring Proportionally, offspring also carry the altruistic gene. And so now we've got a member of this generation who possesses the altruistic gene and can breed and can pass that altruistic gene on to the next generation itself. But it could also help by enhancing the reproduction of its sibling so that its sibling has additional offspring, some of which will also carry that altruistic allele. So this is how indirect selection can lead to the spread of these kinds of traits. Now, we need to know that coefficient of kinship. And so let's go back and look at what happens with meiosis. And so we have diploid parents, and we're going to have the haploid geno genome of the gametes of one parent and the other fuse. OK, so these are now diploid again. These are diploid again. And these are all happening in different combinations. And what we see, though, is that because half of the genetic material from this parent is in this offspring and likewise in this offspring, there's a lot in common between these two because of the shared ancestry. And likewise, this parent confers half of its genes to this offspring and also confers half to this offspring. So again, these two share a lot of genes in common because of the common ancestry of the other parent. So, if you actually tote up what proportion of the genome is the same between these different individuals, by meiosis, of course, you've got half your genes in common with this particular parent, the other half with the other. And if we do the accounting across the same generation, full siblings also have half their genes in common with each other. If you carry on, there's another meiosis, so only half of these genes are going down to the next generation. We've got another parent filling the other half here. So grandparent to grandchild is now related by a quarter. It's going down by half through each meiotic event. And it's also a quarter between aunts and nieces and also between half siblings. If you only had one parent in common, you would also be related to each other by a quarter. So this calculation 
gives us the coefficient of relatedness, and it's just simply the probability that another individual in the population shares an allele by common descent. So from parent to offspring, there's just that one meiotic event. So meiosis divides it by half, so we just raise a half to the first power, so your related parent offspring to a half. From grandparent to grandchild, there's two meiotic events, so now it's a half squared, so you're related by a quarter, etc. And we can do the accounting, and so between full siblings, you've got the quarter in common through this parent, the quarter in common through here, because there's two separate meiotic events separating them. You add them together, they're related by a half. Full cousins, you can also do the accounting. There's four meiotic events between each common ancestor. And this adds up to being related to your full cousins by an eighth. And with full cousins, what that means is that your grandmother is also the grandmother of your cousin, as so is your grandfather. You and your cousin have the same grandmother and the same grandfather. So that defines a full cousin. So, given these coefficients of kinship, and given that the more closely related you are to an individual, the more likely it is you are to share alleles in common. One of the most famous biologists in the 20th century, Bill Hamilton, put together a very simple rule of thumb to tell us when we'd expect individuals within families to be nice to each other. And this is his formula for kin selection. And so alleles favoring altruism are expected to evolve whenever the coefficient relatedness times the benefits conferred to the recipient exceed the costs to the donor. So R is the coefficient of relatedness, the benefit is the benefit to the recipient, that's through increased reproduction, and C is the cost to the donor in terms of reduced personal reproduction. This individual is giving up some reproduction of its own so as to enhance the reproduction of a relative. Now, with Hamilton's rule, we can rearrange this from saying is provided that R times B is greater than C to simply look at the ratio of cost to benefits and say, as long as the coefficient of relatedness is greater than the ratio of costs to benefits, that's when you should be nice to somebody. And so altruistic behavior can evolve by kin selection when the relatedness between two individuals is very high so the larger this number, the more likely it is that this inequality will be met. Also, when the cost is very low, so if this goes down close to zero, you can easily confer benefits to no cost to yourself, so you can give nice things to anybody that you're related to. Or when the benefits are so extraordinarily high. It may be costly for me to help you, but if you'll have a ton of new offspring, well, it would be worth it. That inequality will be met provided I am your close relative. Let me try to make this a little bit more concrete. Helping behavior is expected to evolve via indirect selection if R is greater than C divided by B. Let's put some numbers in there. So let's say that by being nice to you, I would have one fewer offspring than I otherwise might have over my life, but it benefits you with three additional offspring. So that's a really good benefit for you and not that bad of a cost for me in comparison to what I can do for you. Now, given that inequality, we would still only expect me to be that nice to somebody that I'm related to by more than one over three. So if my coefficient of relatedness is greater than a third, those are the individuals I'd be expected to help. So that would be my full siblings, or maybe my parents, or my own offspring. But not for a half-sibling, not for my niece, not for full cousins. Now, this brings to mind a very famous calculation that another British evolutionary biologist, J.B.S. Haldane, said many years ago. He famously wrote that he'd be willing to lay down his life for two brothers, four nephews, or eight cousins. So you're related to your brothers by half, so that's the genetic, genetic equivalent of you is two full siblings or four nephews is the genetic equivalent of you, and eight full cousins would be the same. So, when we look for examples of altruism in nature, we expect kindness to be most common between close relatives.